Hi folks, uh, well it's been a long time since I made my last video, um, but what I'm going to do on this particular occasion is make a, a kind of live coding challenge video. Um, obviously you won't be watching it live, but when when I'm while I'm recording it, it will be a live uh, recording. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of copy what this guy here has done on the coding train. A lot, it's a particularly good channel and the guy does some very interesting coding uh, challenges um, but on this particular one we're going to look at uh, circle packing um, and I just found it really interesting and I think you know I could get I could do this in Python and then maybe output it to uh, Pygame afterwards as a picture um, it just looks really cool and there's lots of stuff you can do with it afterwards once you've once you've created the uh, the, the circles packed into there little spaces. So what we're going to do is going to be using Notepad++ and before I start I've just got to say I do apologize I do stutter and um, I do erm a lot so you'll have to excuse me. Yeah, this is a live thing so there's no not going to be editing involved. Okay so let's let's crack on with this then. So like I say we're going to be using um, Notepad and com the command prompt just to see what's going on. Uh, and what we need to do is, well, we'll, we'll add some, we'll add some libraries first. So definitely need random because our circles are going to be random on the screen. That, so that random element definitely needs to be there. Some maths because we need to work out the distances between two points. Uh, import the system library just in case we need to exit, and obviously we need pi gain. To save the image once we've done it. Okay, so we need to choose the dimensions of our image. So the width and the height of our image will be well. We will we'll use high definition, so 1080. Uh, and then just for just in case, we'll have the half width and half height. Oops, got caps lock on. Uh, width divided by two. Height divided by two don't think I'll be needing them but just in case and um, we need the area which we all know is width times height no don't auto correct me okay so every circle will de we'll de define a class for no we won't define a class for every circle we'll de define a class for every circle so here we go we'll call the class excuse me uh, circle that's original and we'll give it, we'll define its um, starting procedure, function, whatever you want to call them. Put the self in there. Every circle needs a point to start with and an ID. Now the reason why we need an ID is because what we do is when we look for a space that hasn't already been filled, we need to go through all the other circles to find where they are or where this new circle will be in relation to the old circles that exist already. So in order that we don't check our new circle against one that already exists, we create an ID. And if those IDs match, then um, obviously we're still we're looking at the same circle. The circle is looking at itself, which we don't want. OK, so now we need to copy all these parameters from here into our uh, class. So this, no, not X range. Oh, oh, what are you doing? Stop it. Uh, self radius equals one. Always start with a radius of one and self ID equals ID. Now, what we use for the ID is basically the length of a list. So every time we add to that list, we use that length to create our ID for the circles. Um, also, we need to know if the circle is active. And meaning by active, I mean, is the circle still growing? Because what we want to do is when it collides with another circle, we want to stop it growing. Um, because that essentially is that, face, that space filled up. 
Okay, so uh, what else do we need? Nothing. Okay, so that's that's it. That's all we need from our class. Um, now then, let's just think what we need to do now. Okay, so we'll create a list called circles. Yeah, an empty list because that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be filling that with the class uh, circle eventually. Um, now we'll create our loop, our main loop there. Um, and it's going to be an infinite loop until until we fill it up. Excuse me, just take a swig of my coffee. And also what we need to do is we need to now look for a space. And to do that, we're gonna pick a random area of the screen. So we can go from zero to width minus one and y equals random rand int zero to height minus one. And what we're going to do now is check to see if the space has been found. So if space is true, found space equals true, then we need to exit that, this, oh, hang on a minute, typo. If, if found space is true, then we need to exit this and then add a circle to this list here. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to check all the other circles. So for circle in circles, or C in circles, we'll use a small case C there. Um, if distance, no, yeah, distance equals uh, math hypo uh, I'm not I'm not particularly good with maths um, but I do know what this does is it gives us the distance between two points now that is the circles that we're going we're listing through um, iterating through sorry and our newly created point so so it's a uh, CX minus x c y minus y okay so that gives us the distance as a floating point and now if distance is less than equal to c radius found space equals false okay so what's happening here is if the if the distance between our newly created point and the center of our circle here is is less than the radius of the, the circle that we check in then obviously we can't put a circle down there because it's within the site is within the circle that we're checking. So found space equals false. And then we break out of here. Uh, if found space, if not found space, Um, no, 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 no. If found space break. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to count how many times we don't find a space because that because that essentially is what's going to end the program. If we can't find any spaces anymore, then We'll, we'll, we'll say we'll call it quits. So we'll say um, find space 
attempts equals zero. Now we need a maximum cutoff point. So if if it doesn't find a space to put a new circle uh, ten times, then we'll say, we'll say quit. But I don't think ten will be enough. I think it needs to be higher than that. So find oh sorry max find space attempts equals let's say a thousand. Okay, and uh, we'll say exit equals false. So here we need to say find whoops space attempts plus equals one. So we didn't find a space, so now we have to increment that counter and then check it against the max find space. If find space attempts uh, is e is uh, greater or equal to max find, there we go, I'll just auto fill that in, then exit equals true, and we'll also break from this bit here. So if exit equals, if exit uh, break. Yeah. So now, if we've run out of attempts to find the a space, we'll exit. We'll exit this one. Um, we'll set exit flag as true, and then we'll exit this this loop as well. So the main loop, because there's no point in continuing to find um, space. Okay. So what this what this does now is what what this does is creates looks for a space and then. Once it's found one, we should be at this point here. So we need to add it to this list of circles up here. So uh, circles append, and now we'll, well, this is where our class comes in circle. Now we've got X and Y coordinates, which we've already find up there. So X and Y, and then the length, we use the ID as the length of circles already. There we go. So that's uh, that's quite easy, isn't it? Now then, now what we want to do is we want our existing circles to grow. Um, I mean, the thing that's going to stop them is that they're going to encounter another circle. So let's let's go through our circles again. So for C in circles. Now if you remember we said we've got an active thing here so if, this, if the circle is active then we need to keep checking it because it's still growing. It's only inactive when it encounters another circle and then we say look stop growing. Okay so for C. So if C active uh, now if if not C active continue so we'll just go on to the next circle um, and then but what we need to do now is we need to check that we need to check this circle against all the other circles to see if there's any collision going on so for we'll give that we'll give the next circle um, iteration a capital C. So for C in circles again. Um, and now we need to check that ID because if it's if the uh, circle that we if the active circle is checking itself then it obviously it's, it's obviously going to collide because it's within itself so that means it's going to deactivate itself because the the distance between the two points is zero. <laughs> okay, you'll see. Um, so if C ID is equal to C ID 
continue. So we'll just skip over the one if they match. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to check the distance between the two circles. Um, now one circle might be on the one side of the image, the other one might be on the other, so it's relevant. We only, we're only interested in the ones that are close to each other, really. Um, so, but it's, we've got to check them all, all the circles against each other. So circle, no, not circle, uh, distance between circles, whoops, equals, and we need that maths thing again, I'm just going to copy and paste it, it's easy. And then obviously we need to change this to that. And also we need to check, we need to combine the two radiuses because, um, because we want to detect if the, if the, um, if the circles are touching each other. So that if the two radiuses of the two circles that we're checking are equal or overlap, then we definitely know that those two circles are um, have collided. Okay, right. I think I know. I think I'm making sense. I don't know. Let me have another swig of coffee. Okay. So let's now. Combine, you've combined radius um, equals the C radius plus C radius. So if um, if distance between circles minus combined radius uh, is equal or less that is less than or equal to zero, then they're touching or overlapping which means then we need to stop them. So active equals false. Oh, my antivirus has just start, started up for some reason. Uh, C active equals false. So, because we need to stop both circles from growing. There's no point in just stopping the one that we're iterating through in this uh, loop. Um, because they're both touching now, so we might as well forget it. Um, we might as well deactivate both of them. Um, so that's that. That's done. Okay, but now what we need to do is we need to grow the circle. So C radius plus equals 1. Okay. So that what that should do now is that's okay yeah okay that's fine so what that should do now is grow that that circle nicely there um Do we need to break from there? Do we need to break out of that loop? Yeah, we may as well. There's no point in staying in there, is there? Because it's inactive. Uh, and also, we don't need to increase the radius of the this circle if it's also been if it's not active. So if active C active plus one 
Okay, so what I think, I think that's pretty much it. Let's get, let's run it and see what happens. Oh, I need to save it. Python circles circle. So we'll go into the command prompt and we'll circle py. Oh, it's running. Oh, it's done it. So no errors. Brilliant. Normally when I do something, it's absolutely covered in uh, syntax errors and God knows what else. So um, that's that's quite positive, actually. <laughs> um, but obviously we need to we need to see the output, don't we? There's no point in just seeing this. We need to see what it looks like. OK, well, cool. Um, let's have a look. So now we're going to use Pygame to output an image. So uh, if I can remember correctly, image equals pie game surface uh, that's capital S into the surface and then uh, width and height and we'll go through the circles again oh no we're fine I just thought I didn't think there was a way of getting out of this that loop for a minute then for C in circles uh, pie game draw circle uh, what is it that one first then color we'll just we won't define a color we'll just use that and then the X and Y so C X C Y radius next C radius and we don't well it fill it we'll just give it a radius of one yeah and then we'll save it pi game image save circles png right that should be it okay save that and let's give it a run Oh no, what's this? Pie game image takes two arguments. Yes, of course, because we need to supply the image, don't we? The image container. There we go. Um, I think we also should say print circles generated. Uh, print, bleh, print, saving file. Uh, we don't need exclamations every time we write something. Uh, and then print, done. Circles generating, saving file, done. Okay, so now let's, we'll go over to our um, image, we'll get rid of that. See you later. Aha, look, it's created it. <whistles> Mega. It's doing good. So let's have a look at that. Way! There we are. Lots of gaps in there, though, isn't there? Lots of gaps. Um... Oh, dogs are going crazy. So. Uh don't like the fact that they're touching, really. Um, I'd prefer a little gap in there. Um, so we'll, we'll sort that out in a second. And I also want to fill in more space. So if you remember back onto, we'll go back onto here. If you remember onto here, it's got uh, the max find space attempts equals a thousand. So every time it misses a, if it gets, if it, if it goes in, looks for a space inside a circle, then that's obviously a, a miss because we can't create another circle inside a, a circle. So what we need to do is maybe sort of say 10,000, 10,000 attempts to look for more space. Okay, we'll save that. Obviously the more, obviously the, the more 
um, attempts you make, the longer it takes to process the circles. But I'm hoping it won't be too long. Um, well, it is taking quite a while. <laughs> but, ah, it's done. Circles generated, saving file, done. Brilliant. I like it. Let's go back to the... Let's go back to this. And we'll have a look at that again. Wow, that's a lot better, isn't it? Let's click on and zoom in. Yeah, loads of loads more space taken up there. But they're still touching, which is annoying. <laughs> don't like it. It just looks a bit, I don't know, odd. So we'll go back to the code and we'll see if we can get rid of them gaps. Uh, we'll get we'll add some gaps. So let's get back here. Um, let's well, I'll come down to this one. So gap, gap in pixels um, equals what? Say three pixels. Um, now we need to find out. Obviously, when we're when we're looking for um, when we're looking for a space, we don't want to be in that gap either. So, so if distance is uh, less than equal to radius plus gap. So we've got an exclusion zone just outside of the circle as well, which will which is the, the three pixels. So you can't go inside a circle or that gap, that three pixel gap outside the circle either. Um, but also we need to stop the circles from growing if um, if they get if the radius, the radius minus uh, the, the distance between the two circles minus the combined radius is less than the gap, then stop them as well. Okay, um, let's have a look, see if that works out. Generating, 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 generating. Might as well have a sip of coffee. It's cold now. Ah, done. Circles generated, save and file, brilliant. Okay, so let's go back and have a look at the uh, what's it magic? The image that's generated. Ah, look. Yes, every circle now has a gap. Those are a bit small, but never mind. Ah, excellent. So these these really small circles here, they're quite irritating, aren't they? So maybe we should have a, a starting radius of two. So what I've done here, if you look, I've just uh, upgraded that to two. And um, we'll give it a little run and see if that gets rid of those really small circles, which are just basically dots. Bum, 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 bum. And it's done. Let's go back. Yay! It has. Good. Excellent. So now what we want to do is we'll give it the maximum. Well, we'll go 100,000. Let's see if we can really go for it. But we want to we want to also monitor our progress, don't we? So um, what we'll need to do is we'll need to find out uh, we'll, we'll, how much area is left um, every time we stop a circle from growing, because that is then officially taken up that area of the, the image. So area covered equals zero. Um, we'll also have a percentage there. covered equals zero. We need it a floating point, I think. And we covered that needs to be floating point. 
Actually, no, I don't need that. And uh, last reported percent equals zero. Okay. Um, now we'll make that minus one. Okay. So every time, every time a, a circle becomes inactive inactive we need to report how much um, space is left in the image or how much has been taken up rather so if I remember correctly uh, area covered um, plus equals C radius squared Plus math. No, not plus but times, isn't it? Times math pi. Okay. Now we need to get the percentage. So, um, percentage covered equals uh, int uh, area. Area covered divided by area times 100. Yep. Yeah. And then if percentage covered, right there, if last reported percentage is not equal to percentage covered print percentage covered last reported percentage equals percentage covered okay so what we're doing here is we're saying um, what we're doing here is looking how much of the image has been taken up by this uh, inactive circle then we're converting that to a percentage um, of the total which is the total is area um, and then instead of just continually outputting a percentage to the uh, to the command prompt we want to check it to see if it's changed the percentage has changed from the last time we printed it um, and if it has changed, then we make the last reported percentage the current percentage, and then we start the whole process again. So let's give that a whirl. Now it usually stops around about 67% for some reason, so we'll, we'll try that. So now here it goes. And obviously as the percentage increases, it's, it's continually finding it more difficult to find spaces. So that's why it slows down as we get towards filling the whole thing up but it usually gets to around about 68% it gets to 68% and then but it, it never kind of reaches 69% for some reason Nope, don't look like it's going to get any further than 64. Maybe. Maybe. Nope, didn't get any further. All right, so we'll uh, we'll go over to here and check, see what the video, the thingy looks like, the image. Yeah, there we go. That was pretty cool. Obviously, there's still some spaces there, and you can increase it if you want to um, and just get as many circles in there as you possibly can I think that's pretty cool yeah it's nice that um, what what you can do is eventually you can create some really cool stuff I mean look at this I'll show you a little video that I did with with it uh, videos Coca-Cola So yeah, that's using the Coca-Cola logo, obviously. 
Don't go on forever, by the way. It's just... Let's see. I just found the, found the tune really quite funky. But it's interesting the way it sort of goes round like that in a circle and then... But the, the, the logo doesn't. Hmm. Anyway, that's that. Uh, well, that's kind of the end of this tutorial, really. Um, I'm going to have to find somewhere to post this this script for you to have a look at and play around with. Um, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it, and hopefully it won't be a year before I make my next video. But thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.